Hi, welcome to the next in our series of Church at Home videos for St Luke's and St Paul's. My name is Reverend Matt Malins, Vicar of St Luke's and St Paul's Churches, and it's great to have you joining us today. Today is the 20th of December, or the fourth Sunday of Advent, and we'll be thinking today about that and that reading. And later in our video, the Reverend Peter Davis is going to be speaking to us about that. But before we start, as usual with church, some notices. And we've got a few this morning. So first of all is our build up to Christmas and we have our nativity scene. Now we were planning to have a nativity trail around the church, but unfortunately due to illness and the fact that myself and the, my family are having to isolate, that's having to change to a nativity scene. So if you want to go and look at that, please do go over to St Luke's and have a look in the porch. It's a beautiful scene there, well lit up, and it's well worth looking in the late afternoon or early evening when it will look at its best. Coming up in the next few days, or hopefully even this evening from this point onwards, will be our parish carol service. If you want to have a look at that, please do. It will be available on our YouTube channel for you to see. Uh, and a joint effort between the whole parish of Leek and Meerbrook, six churches working together to present a united front. It's going to be great. After that, from Monday through to Thursday, we have a series of videos uh, and bedtime stories. Please do enjoy those as we build up from Monday through to Christmas Eve, uh, when we will have our, our usual crib service, but it's going to be held online. Please do join and watch that. It's going to be great fun. I'm not sure what's coming, to be honest, but all I know is it's going to be exciting and there's puppets to watch as well. Over the few days of Christmas, we are holding some services in person. So if you want to come to church, you can. On Christmas Eve, there will be a quiet communion service here at St Paul's at half past six in the evening, led by Reverend Barry Wilson. And again, then on Christmas Day at St Paul's, there will be a united celebration of Christmas at 10.30 in the morning. Please do come along and bring your presents. Uh, hopefully, that will also be online so you'll be able to watch that as it happens. And then on the 27th, so the Sunday after Christmas, there again is going to be a quieter communion service at 9.30 at St Luke's. Please do watch that or join in if you can. Now, I'm pleased to say that over Christmas, as a church together, we've been raising money uh, for giving gifts to children who possibly wouldn't have been able to have anything this Christmas. And I, it's been amazing, the response that's come in. We've raised nearly £500 for Operation Christmas Child, and that will be going to them. But we've managed to raise a, an amazing amount of money for buying presents for local children who might not be able to celebrate. And I'm pleased to say that this week that's just gone, um, we delivered 23 uh, sets of presents for 23 children uh, in nine families and they are very very appreciative of what's been given so thank you so much for your generosity and thank you for all that's been achieved through that it has been wonderful now as is normal we need to celebrate some birthdays uh, and the first birthday we need to celebrate this coming week is obviously Jesus's birthday isn't it so I've got a birthday biscuit here for Jesus and it had to be I'm afraid it had to be a gold bar didn't it uh, there was no other choice so Jesus this birthday biscuit is coming your way uh, and anyone else who's got a birthday this week, uh, I'm afraid it's a bit overshadowed, isn't it? But this birthday biscuit is coming your way too. So as we think about today and the fourth Sunday of Advent, let's say our collect. Eternal God, as Mary waited for the birth of your son, so we wait for his coming in glory. Bring us through the birth pangs of this present age to see with her our great salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let's light our Advent candles.
So over to Jerry and team for some worship. Today's reading is taken from Luke chapter 1, reading from verses 26 to 38. The birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. 
And the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The visit of the angel Gabriel to Mary is, I hope, familiar to us. It's not quite part of the Christmas story, but it is certainly an Advent story because it is narrative telling us what happened. There is little for me to do. It explains itself. So I'm simply going to share with you some of my reflections. And there are two things that I have noted. The first is the difference and the contrast between the announcement of John's birth to Zachariah and the announcement of Jesus' birth to Mary. The second thing is to reflect on the essential nature of Jesus. Last week, Matt spoke about John the Baptist, the forerunner of Jesus, who was to prepare his way Luke tells us how his conception six months before the visit of Gabriel to Mary came about. I know it's not part of the reading, but let me just draw some parallels and their contrasts. Firstly, Zechariah was startled and afraid at the angel's appearance, a very natural response in the circumstances. Mary was troubled and fearful of what the angel might say, not so much his appearance but whether he was a postman bearing gifts or a bailiff taking things away. Gabriel reassures her. Secondly, God had heard Zachariah's prayer for a child and was reactive. He responded to what Zachariah prayed. On the other hand, God chose Mary and calls her favoured. He is proactive in his dealing with Mary. Thirdly, John is to prepare the way for the Lord by turning people's hearts around. Jesus, meaning Saviour, is great. He is to be King who will reign forever. He is the Son of God, the Son of the Most High. John is the son of Zechariah and Elizabeth and will be filled with the Holy Spirit during Elizabeth's pregnancy. Jesus, on the other hand, is the offspring of the Holy Spirit of Mary. He's not Joseph's child, though he was, as Jewish custom dictated, uh, an inheritor of Joseph's bloodline. That bloodline, Luke records, takes us back to Adam, who is also described as a son of God. There is then a similarity between Jesus and Adam, but there is also a contrast. The similarity is that neither Jesus nor Adam has a human father. The contrast is that Adam was created out of dust, but Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit in his overshadowing of Mary. Then finally, Zechariah is sceptical. He wants to be sure that what the angel has said is true and will happen. Mary is not sceptical but simply asks, 
how it's going to happen. Well, the upshot of all this is that when God speaks, it happens. And that's tremendously reassuring. I find great help in the fact that God chose not only Mary in her graceful acceptance of God's will for her, but Zachariah in all his scepticism, in his questioning and I dare say doubt. When God acts, he acts in his might and majesty. We are simply his servants. Perhaps some of us are more like Mary in gracious humility. Others, like myself, will question and self-doubt. God is not restricted by our limitations. When he speaks, his word will not fail. The second point I want to focus on then is who Jesus is. And this, of course, is the crunch issue. Christmas is not the celebration of another baby's birth, albeit in unusual circumstances. It is something quite outstanding. First, he will be great. The Greek is megas, and it would be entirely appropriate to call Jesus mega. Second, he will be called the Son of the Most High. That isn't a title commonly used of Jesus by his followers even today. The Most High was a well-used title of God through the Old Testament, but less so in the New. It generally stresses not so much the God of Israel, but the God of the world, the Lord of the nations, the power over nature and the spiritual world. There is none higher, none greater, no one more wonderful or awesome. And Jesus is to be described as his son. This properly sets Jesus over all creation. Even though by his incarnation he will also be created, his humanity does not diminish his deity. He will be king, and though the message of Gabriel quite naturally focuses on the future for Israel, it opens also the way for his eternal kingdom. His is the only kingdom that will last forever, through all time, and in all space, and in the spiritual dimension. Jesus is not an afterthought on God's part. He is the focal point of God's plan in creation and history. While the events of Jesus' life are crucial for us all, Jesus is not just a saviour, but a Lord. Jesus is Lord. The shepherds and the kings will bow before him. While we celebrate this, his coming, we too should remember that we are his servants who bow in love and gratitude to the Saviour who is Lord and whose kingdom will never end. To finish, just a quote from John writing in Revelation 5. Then I heard, Every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that in them is, saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and honour, glory and power, for ever and ever. Amen. As we prepare to meet Jesus in the stable, let's just reflect on who it is that we're meeting. Jesus, light of the world, through whom all things were made, and in whom all things now hold together. Prince of Peace, Living Word, Risen, Reigning and Coming King. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Light of the World, we bring to you the darkness in the world and ask you to shine for the sick and the dying, for the bereaved and lonely, for those whose work and livelihood is under threat, 
for those who are working so hard to find the answers, for scientists, politicians, for healthcare workers and all of those working on the front line. Lord, shine your light, bring hope and give strength and wisdom. light of the world, for the darkness in our own hearts. When we're scared, when we lack trust, when we're confused and we don't know what to do for the best. Lord Jesus, shine your light and bring us back to you, source of all hope who knows and loves us more than we can tell and who has come to share this life with us so we'll never have to walk it on our own. Father, thank you for your grace, your love, your mercy and for the gift of Jesus, our Saviour, in whose name we pray. Amen. close our service in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we look forward in this Christmas week to the arrival of your Son, helpful to help us to be mindful of the light you bring into the darkness. Help us as your church to shine that light into the community around us so that all can see your light in this world. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.